What is up guys, welcome back to another video and today, um, first of all I know what you're thinking, you can see this World Cup ball, uh, no I'm not doing the predictions yet, um, that will be coming up soon, around maybe after the Six Nations, um, but today uh, I'm going to be talking about um, what shape the uh, Six Nations uh, teams are in, so the likes of England, uh, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Uh, not France and Italy, just the UK. Um, so, yeah, so that's when we're going to be going through, like, what shape they're in now, what uh, through the years they all had, and what it looks like they're going to be, um, like, be like at the Rugby World Cup, what to expect from those teams. So, before that, but before that, um, obviously, well, a lot of you don't know this, uh, I, I have my birthday last week, um, uh, the big 17, um, and, uh, I obviously got this ball, um, as one of the presents, uh, it's a, a, a brilliant looking ball, uh, I love the colours on it, so, um, obviously that with this fantastic box, um, but also, I've got this bad boy, now, uh, I've always wanted a drone, um, uh, this is a very, uh, it's a very nice one, all the way from the U.S. of A. from my uh, grandparents over there. Um, just found out about it today. Uh, just opened it today, so it's a, it's very nice. So you guys can be looking forward to. Uh, I'm gonna be. It's a, it has a camera, so I'm gonna be um, uh, doing some videos with this thing. Um, hopefully, trying to get it out outside and. Uh, uh, try and get it outside and um, yeah, hopefully uh, get it out on a nice day and show you what it can do. So yeah, that's that was my uh, present there. So on with a video though. Um, so I'm gonna be going through as I said, uh, what what shape the UK teams are in uh, after like uh, up leading up to the Rugby World Cup in 2019 starting in September, less than a year away. Um, I actually looked it up yesterday. It is exactly 287 days until the Rugby World Cup in Japan kicks off. So, yeah, so first off, here we go. So I'm gonna start off with England. England had a sort of a mixed year, good and bad. Uh, they didn't get off to the best of starts. They um, they obviously the Six Nations was a big blow for them. Uh, they came, I think, second last in front of Italy, um, which was very poor. They lost to Scotland, um, France, and Ireland. They lost their last three games in the Six Nations, which was uh, probably disappointing for them. Uh, and uh, obviously lost to Ireland at home which was uh, the Grand Slam decider for Ireland. Uh, I'm happy about that. Yeah, come on, Ireland. Um, obviously, the, the Grand Slam. Uh, but for England, it was um, a big low, and that sort of dampened their confidence a bit going into the into the summer tour of South Africa. Um, they can take some positives away from the Six Nations, obviously bringing in new players and all that will... Uh, um, be a bit mixed, uh, mixed confidence. Some new players starting, some uh, and then some of the recent, um, some of the most well-known players uh, um, telling the youngsters how to blend in well and uh, you know get used to the atmosphere and all the uh, what they do. So yeah, so England Six Nations not the greatest start to the year. Um, they moved on. They moved on to the summer tour. They were in South Africa this year. Um, again, positives, but they lost the series um, 2 1. Um, positives were England started the first two tests really well, scoring, I think, like three tries at the start for each of them. And they got like a 21 0 lead, but then they just stopped playing. They stopped playing. And you can't do that against South Africa. South Africa are 
our quality side, they've improved since like maybe 2016. They've improved a lot. And they had one spell in 2017 where they weren't the greatest, but um, you know, uh, they, they've definitely improved. So England uh, just stopped playing and they let South Africa back into the game. And South Africa won the first two tests. Uh, I can't remember the exact scores, but I think they were like maybe 10 points apart at the end. So, um, yeah, South Africa uh, blew England away. Um, and that's a lesson learned to England. You can't just stop playing. Like, after scoring three tries, you can't think, oh, we're home and dry. Uh, we, we've, we've won it. You, you can't think that against the Southern, Southern Heavens, fair teams. Um, so they've learned from that. Um, so a disappointing Six Nations and then a disappointing Summer Tour. Um, but again, both taking some positives out of them both. And then finally, at the end of the year that's just happened, um, we move on to the Autumn Internationals. And it was better. It was better for England. They, uh, I think they got together and said, boys, we've had a disappointing year so far. Let's finish it on a high. And I think that's what they did. Um, even though they lost to New Zealand, it was one point they lost by. And they were disallowed to try at the end, which could have probably made them one. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they played, uh, they played South Africa. They played New Zealand. They played Japan. And they played Australia. So, yeah, they got their revenge over South Africa, even though it was by a point. Um... Uh, twelve eleven was the final score. Uh, it's still a win. They they still uh managed to do it. Um, there was a one controversial topic that uh, from that game was Owen Farrell's tackle, uh, a potential no arms tackle on one of the South African players. Uh, I'm not gonna get into all that. Um, I'm not gonna tell you my opinion on that. Uh, it was risky looking. Uh, but I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna continue on with it, and let it let it pass. So um, so that yeah, the beat South Africa got their revenge on them. Uh, twelve eleven final score at Twickenham. Um, then they had a, a tough uh, match next against the world champions New Zealand. Um, which was a very tight game, and England started it really well. They started it really well. Um, fair play to them, scored two tries in like the opening 20 minutes and got a 15-0 lead um, uh, and uh, yeah, unfortunately a 15-0 lead is not enough to get away from the All Blacks, the All Blacks are number one for a reason and that showed in that game, they never gave up New Zealand never put the heads down uh, they got a few drop goals and a try before half time from Damien McKenzie uh, under the sticks to make it 15 10 at half time. And then again, England sort of stopped playing. They sort of stopped attacking New Zealand, and that cost them. New Zealand, with two um, penalties, got in the lead, and the final score was 15 England, 16 New Zealand at the end of it. And another controversial decision cost England again uh, was the disallowed Underhill try with five minutes to go. And it was for an offside decision. And again, I'm not going to go into it uh, today, uh, but it was marginal. It was so close. It was like maybe less than an inch, maybe like a centimetre offside. Uh, from Courtney Laws to charge the ball down and then um, Underhill obviously going to score in the corner. Uh, so yeah, they were probably annoyed about that England and that would have probably won the game if that try was allowed. So yeah, it's another positive taken out of that game. Started well, but again, stopped playing um, and that cost them in the end. So then they played Japan the, uh, and obviously Japan are the uh, hosts for the next World Cup um, and the game sort of shocked me a bit the game shocked me a bit because 
Japan played really well. They played really well. They had a brilliant start. Some of their skills were unbelievable, and you can see some of that skills in that vid my last video of the Autumn Internationals highlights I posted. Uh, I would love to get some more views on that. Um, I made a mistake on that video by putting music on it. It was something about the music that uh, it didn't allow me to didn't get to allow to show in some um, some places. But uh, I will learn from that mistake, obviously. Um, but uh, we'll move on. Uh, the, some of the skills Japan showed were absolutely unbelievable. Like the the offloads around the back of the player, uh, they scored two amazing tries, two well worked tries, and um, they sort of gave England a scare. England obviously probably put their second tier team out. Um, but again, they came out with the win. England, they eventually absorbed Japanese pressure and um, uh, got over in the end. Um, so yeah, um, and then finally they moved on to uh, they moved on to the Australia game, and I think that was probably the best game they played uh, all year. I think uh, they ended on a high. They got the they got the result. I uh, can't remember the exact score, I think it might have been 37-18 uh, to England. Um, but yeah, they, they thoroughly deserved that. Australia had some moments, they had some good plays with obviously Falai try and um, their winger, Hale Petty, uh, like running nearly up the whole way to the line and then Falai getting another score. But um, England did well, they absorbed the pressure and they got over the line eventually um, winning 37-18 to Australia so overall like sort of a disappointing year more than a positive year I would say for England um, obviously the two major losses with the Six Nations and uh, the summer tour to South Africa but they ended on a high I think with the Autumn Internationals they had a better uh, they had a better uh, autumn than they did at the start of the year so in terms of um, the World Cup it is still a long way to go there's still uh, matches to play um, but I think uh, England can go there if they have a good Six Nations in 2019 if they have a good Six Nations while they're either winning it or coming second I feel um, they can do well in the in the World Cup, uh, they have a tough group. They have group of death once again with Argentina and France in it. Um, so, yeah, that's gonna be uh, a tough group for them. But I feel they can probably win that group, and I will say they will get to the quarterfinals. But I won't say any more than that. We'll have to see who they play in the quarterfinals. Uh, but I think they will make it this time. Last year in their own World Cup, they. Um, they failed to get out of their group, which is very disappointing for them, even though they had Australia and Wales in their group. Um, but um, England, I think, can go to this World Cup uh, and do something like positive and um, have, a good, have a good campaign. So that will be for England. We'll move on. Ireland. Ireland, Ireland, Ireland. Ireland probably had one of the best years in their history. <coughs> Sorry, in their history, they had probably one of the best years in Irish rugby history in terms of wins, historic wins, and undefeated streaks. I think Ireland probably like were the best the team of the year. They they won the award team of the year and fairly deserved. I, I would have voted for them, not being biased. They had an unbelievable year and I think they were better than New Zealand this year. I will say that. They were better than New Zealand this year. Um only losing once in the entire year. Uh so we'll go through their year. Oh, first off, Six Nations. Obviously bringing in new players uh, like Jacob Stockdale, for example, his first Six Nations. Uh, Jordan Larmer from Leinster. 
uh, Joey Carberry, um, who played a bit uh, before that, but um, all those young guys bringing in them, uh, and it paid off. Ireland's depth, obviously, again, Bondiaki, his first Six Nations, um, all those new guys coming in, and it paid off. It paid off. The Ireland had depth, they had strength. Uh, they had skill, they had really good players, they kept all their players fit, um, no injuries, um, except for Robbie Henshaw, unfortunately, but because of the depth in Ireland squad with Gary Ringrose and Bundy Aki and Chris Farrell in the centres, um, they could fill in those gaps easily, and it paid off, Ireland beat France, that was the only game, France was the only game that was nervy for Ireland. They, with that last minute drop goal from Johnny Sexton, that was the pivotal moment of the of the Six Nations for me. If that drop goal didn't go over, we may have seen a different outcome. Uh, but that, that's just rugby for you. Um, uh, Sexton, with a moment of pure genius and pure skill to get it from the halfway line over to the posts at the start of the France was absolutely amazing. So Ireland beat them, uh, fifteen thirteen. Um, then we moved on to Italy, and that was fairly comfortable. Beat them with a big margin, probably, uh, probably. Uh, can't remember the score, maybe like fifty six fourteen or something. Um, with Jacob Stockdale obviously scoring two tries in that. Um, and we run riot in that game. Uh, then we had, then we had Wales at home, and uh, that was another cracker of a game. Um, we played well. Wales played well. They played decent. Um, and obviously, uh, Ireland winning it with the last uh, play of the game, uh, with Jacob Stockdale once again intercepting the ball and scoring under the posts. To for a final score of thirty seven twenty seven to Ireland at the Aviva Stadium. Uh, it was a great atmosphere. It was an overall great game. It was probably one of the games of the Six Nations, along with probably England versus Scotland. Um, then we played Scotland at home, and again another good game. Uh, we dominated the whole way, and we won twenty eight eight in the end. Again, Stockdale scoring two great tries. Um, and then finally, probably the best game of the of the Six Nations for Ireland was against England at Twickenham. And this game was pretty special because Ireland, it's very rare for Ireland to beat England at Twickenham. We haven't beaten England at Twickenham since like 2010. Uh... Yeah, 2010 was probably the last time we beat England at Twickenham. So uh, it's a very rare occasion for us, but we utterly dominated. We knew the Grand Slam would be on the line. We knew that we stopped England the year before from winning the Grand Slam at the Aviva Stadium, but this time it was our turn, and we knew we had to just go out and attack, attack, attack. And that's what we did. We scored three great tries um, with um, CJ Stander, uh, Gary Ringrose and Jacob Stockdale scoring the tries for Ireland um, uh, winning the game at Twickenham oh, what was the final score it was um, oh I can't even remember the final score it was like 28-15 to Ireland um, which was absolutely amazing and obviously the Grand Slam winners of 2018 were Ireland and very well deserved so they had a great start to the year and felt confident going into the summer tour of Australia um, and that's where I'll move on to next Australia we haven't played Australia in a summer tour since 2009 um, I think um, and uh, we hadn't won a series down there for 40 years so it was a big challenge and history was on the line um, the first test 
didn't go to plan for us. Australia works strong, um, and they they uh, battled to a uh, eighteen nine win um, in the end. It was very tight in some parts. Ireland led a couple times from penalty kicks. We uh, the coach uh, our coach Stu Schmidt made an interesting decision for the first test. He put Carberry to start a ten and Johnny Sexton on the bench, which was um, a very interesting call, uh, I think, because uh, you sort of want to get ahead. Uh, you want to probably win the first test, um, just to get ahead and put pressure on the other team, but it was obviously a tactic that didn't work in the end, but um, they moved on onto the second test, much better for Ireland, um, winning it. 26-21. It was close again, but uh, I think Ireland deserved it in the end. Scored great tries. Uh, Ty Furlong scoring a try. I um, can't remember who else crossed. I think there was a, dry, a penalty try for us as well. So, um, and yeah, that was a great game for us. Um, we absorbed the Australian pressure and we eventually got over the line. And then it was the final test, the decider which Ireland won, um, and the final score was 2016 to Ireland, um, and well-deserved a series, a first series win in Australia since, for 40 years, um, which was unbelievable, and it added on to the celebrations of the Six Nations, which Ireland had, and 30 deserved Ireland, they really deserved it, and uh, I think in the end, the second two, the last two tests, Ireland definitely deserved to win, and that's what they did. So, the Six Nations Grand Slam and a series win in Australia uh, were the highlights there of the start of the year. Then we move on to probably the greatest autumn series Ireland has ever done in. Um, I think beating the 2016 series. We played Italy in Chicago, we played Argentina at home, we played New Zealand at home, and we played USA at the Aviva. So first off, Italy, we, fair, we probably knew that was going to be an easy game, not taking anything away from Italy, but Ireland's definitely too strong for them, and it showed Ireland winning uh, by a massive margin, I think it was... Uh, 54-7, uh, something like that, um, so yeah, with Jordan Armour, one of our young guns, scoring a hat-trick with his first tries for Ireland, um, then we moved on to a very tough game at the Aviva Stadium against Argentina, Argentina surprised us a bit, they sort of gave us a wee bit of a scare, and uh, fair play to them, um, they're a very good side uh, on their day, they can definitely cause some upsets. So, yeah, they gave us a scare. They led a couple of times. They scored a couple of tries. So, uh, yeah, it scared us a bit. But in the end, we got over the line. And we won 28-19, uh, um, I think, was the final score. Uh, we eventually uh, scored our couple of tries at the end to give us a lead. And that stopped... Uh, Argentina from coming any closer, so that was the tough game, a tough game for us, but we got over the line eventually, and then it was the big game, the game of the year, the game everyone was talking about, and that was Ireland versus the All Blacks at the Aviva Stadium, in a packed Aviva Stadium, um, the noise was incredible, the atmosphere was electric, uh, the haka was intense, the anthems were emotional, it was just all going on and you could sense that Ireland were going to do something special here, that Ireland were going to beat the All Blacks for the first time in Ireland and that is what they did. They beat them 16-9 and very well deserved. There was a lot of history in that game. First of all, obviously beating New Zealand at, in Ireland for the first time ever and also, I think I said this in the other video, Stopping New Zealand from scoring a try in the game, keeping them out, and 
that was probably the most historic part of it. Well, no, I think that the win was the most historic, uh, historic part of it, but also keeping New Zealand out. The last time that happened was with the Lions uh, in 2017, but also um, the, the, the next proper country that did that was France in 1995. And uh, that is the historic part of it. 1995 was the last time New Zealand didn't score trying to game. So Ireland, another part of history in this incredible year for them. Beating the All Blacks was one thing, but keeping them out, not letting them score a try, was unbelievable. It showed our character and uh, passion to win this game. And it paid off in the end, and we won 16-9 at the Aviva Stadium. And then finally, the last game, moving on to the USA. Uh, the USA is uh, where I was actually originally born. Um, and then I moved over to Ireland because my dad's Irish. Uh, so we, so that was the game sort of to bring new players in to uh, sort of develop the squad a bit. And they did, they brought new players in, a few Ulster players like John Cooney, Will Addison, Stuart McCluskey, uh, Jordy Murphy, um, Ian Henderson, uh, players like that. Um, and a few Munster, Leinster player, Academy players and stuff like that, bringing them in, getting them their first starts. Oh, there you are. Sorry. Uh, uh, on their international caps um, and it paid off it showed Ireland's depth again uh, really uh, really uh, showing what they can do with their squad um, winning tw uh, I think 57 14 57 14 I think uh, was the final score uh, US started well. They came, they came with two tries and it was 14 all for some period of the, the the match, but Ireland eventually ran away with it and scored brilliant tries to obviously win the match and cap off the best year for Irish rugby in their history. Um, so in terms of the World Cup, the dreaded World Cup for Ireland, obviously Ireland when it comes to World Cups, they their their performance just goes downhill. Uh, they start. I think they start well in the pool, and then when they get to the quarterfinals, it's just uh, so. This World Cup, it's still a long way away, as I said. Ireland, having just um, had their best year. Of rugby, uh, what could they do in Japan? They have Scotland, the host Japan, Samoa, and Russia in their group, and I feel that's pretty simple group for Ireland. Not taking any away from Scotland and Japan, but I feel Ireland will win that group. I don't see any shocks in there. The one shock potentially could be Japan versus Scotland, Japan winning that, but. I would say Ireland will win the group fairly comfortably. Um, and then the issue is whoever wins the group is likely to pit. Whoever, sorry, whoever loses the group in Ireland's group will play New Zealand in the quarterfinals. And the, uh, whoever wins the group will play South Africa. Um, it is a very tough quarterfinal both either way. So I feel Ireland's quarterfinal will be with South Africa. You never know. Italy can do something. But it's most likely to be South Africa. And that is the thing. Uh, that is the worry. Uh, South Africa are a very good side. So I feel they will play very well in that World Cup. They could shock New Zealand. And that could be a problem for Ireland as well. Because if, we, if South Africa beat New Zealand... Uh, and we win our group, we'll have to play New Zealand in the quarterfinals. We've beaten them before, 
we can do it again, but in World Cups, um, we're going to have to avoid injuries. We're going to have to uh, have a good squad depth, and we're going to have to have a bit of luck along the way. Last World Cup, we had our two toughest games at the end of the group stage, which cost us some players for the quarterfinals. This year, we have our two toughest games at the start of the pool, and our two easier games at the end. So that means we can rest our big players um, for those two games and hopefully have a fresh team and are probably put out our best possible team for the quarterfinals. And that can hopefully take us to the, a place that is unknown to Ireland and that is a World Cup semi-final. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not saying we'll get there. I'm not saying we can't get there, but uh, I will be predicting that in the near future I will be predicting what I think after the Six Nations, after watching the Six Nations I'll predict um, how far I think the teams can go so moving on that would be Ireland's year absolutely fantastic year for Ireland um, so moving on Scotland uh, Scotland had a pretty good year as well I'm not going to lie, they had a decent Six Nations obviously the highlights for them being England and France um, uh, losing to Wales and Italy, so they won three out of five games, and they came fourth. Unfortunately, I think they came fourth. No, 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 no. They came third. They came third. Uh, France came fourth. Um, so yeah, they came third. Decent Six Nations for them. Um, obviously their summer tour. Uh, I'm not sure where they went. I'm not sure where they went, but I think was it the US. I think they went to the US, uh, and I think I heard the US beat them in one of those games, so that was a big shock, um, the US beating them, uh, so yeah, that's a big shock, um, but I think they ended up winning that tour, I have to look it up, uh, I'll, I'll look it up quickly here, hold on, uh, just give me a second, I'll edit this part out. I've got my editing software, so I'll, I'll edit this part out. But uh, so I found their summer tour. It, it was against Argentina. Uh, it was against Argentina, Canada, and the USA. So that that was the um, that was their tour. So I think uh, they beat Argentina, and then they lost to the USA, and I think they beat Canada. So they won two out of three. So ultimately, I think they won that tour. Uh, they would have been pleased, but obviously the big shock was the USA beating them. Um, so a decent Six Nations and a decent-ish summer tour. So they went on to the Autumn Internationals to play Fiji, Argentina and South Africa. Beat Fiji, beat Argentina, lost to South Africa. So um, they beat Fiji convincingly, 54-17, um, something like that. Um, then they played uh, Argentina. Or sorry, then they played South Africa, and that was a tough game. It was very close, some very skillful plays, um, but uh, South Africa came on top in that, and I think they won by like seven or something or six. No, I think it was twenty twenty six to the South Africa, so it was close. I think so, and South Africa sneaked away with it. Um, there were some great tries in that game, and you can see that in my autumn internationals. Uh, Autumn Internationals um, video that I posted a few days ago um, and then they played Argentina and that was a very sloppy toughish game but um, Scotland again came on top of that and won 14-9 in the end they scored a try and that took them away from Argentina so that was Scotland's year um, goodish year they were probably um, probably uh, feel uh, they feel confident after that year uh, in terms of the World Cup, they're in Ireland's pool, obviously. I think they will come second in that. I don't. It's hard to predict Japan uh, beating them to come second, but I feel Scotland will do it. It'll come second. Um, we'll have to see. There could be shocks in the World Cup. So, yeah, that's what I think. Scotland will come second. That means they will likely to play New Zealand in the quarterfinals. So, in terms of that, I say the quarterfinals is where they're going to stop up. Uh, for the world in terms of the World Cup. So finally, 
Finally, we'll move on to uh, wheels. Um, I know this has been a very long video. Um, thank you for if you've stayed with me this long. Um, wheels uh, obviously had a, a, a good six nations. Um, obviously, just the only loss was against Ireland. No, sorry, they lost against Ireland and England. Um, uh, and they came second with three wins from five. Uh, and just I think on points difference they beat uh, they were in front of Scotland um, so yeah a, a decent Six Nations uh, almost beat England and almost beat Ireland so uh, they'll take a lot of positives from that uh, and then their summer tour was to Argentina and they won all three tests down there um, so it was a clean sweep for the the summer tour um, and then finally, the Autumn Internationals, they had a, a, not a great Autumn Internationals, they were unbeaten. So they, they played, uh, who they played? They played Tonga, they absolutely thrashed Tonga, like 74 14 or something. They, uh, they played South Africa and they played Australia. Um, so they beat Australia 9 6. It's a tough game, but that was also history for them because. Uh, obviously, they hadn't beaten, they hadn't beaten Australia in a couple of tests, um, so they would have been pleased about that result. And then they played South Africa in the last game, and they beat South Africa. Uh, I can't remember the score, but um, yeah, they beat South Africa, and that was a very good uh, moment for them as well. I think they're like maybe nine games unbeaten now, so they're on the rise. They're third in the world currently behind Ireland so you know Welsh rugby has grown it's gotten better it's developed so they can take a lot of positives from that um, so yeah that will be the video guys thank you so much for watching um, if you like this video hit that thumbs up button and please subscribe to this channel um, for amazing content coming up I will be using obviously this probably in the future um, Hopefully, it's a very nice, it's a very nice uh, drone. Um, hopefully, I can be using that soon enough. I've got my editing software already, um, ready to go. So I think at Christmas time, I should be able to get a proper camera. So what you see here, this sort of blurriness, will go away, and I'll probably get more high def um, picture for you guys. Um, so a lot of content obviously coming up with the Six Nations predictions, World Cup predictions. Some reaction videos maybe of the Six Nations and obviously um, per, um, going through the World Cup at the end of the year. Um, so yeah, that will be the that will be the highlight probably of next year, the World Cup I will be predicting and going through all the matches for you guys. So uh, thanks guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to this video. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers.